now um, I would like to um, introduce Kristina von Olreich and Maria Djupström. Um, Kristina is from, now you see her in screen, Kristina is from the KTH, Institute of Technology, and Maria Djupström is from Chalmers University of Technology. And if I understood things correctly now, uh, Christina and Maria, I will just continue with the presentation and you will talk to, to that presentation. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you so much. Then I give Thank the you. word to you, Maria and Christina. Thanks. Uh, is it working, the slideshow I show now? Yes, I can see it. Maria, oh, sorry, thank, for, yes. so, sorry for interrupting. I will continue to show your slides, if that's okay. That's okay. Okay. So, uh, thank you for uh, letting us have the opportunity to talk you, to you about this uh, initiative in the clim uh, climate area called uh, Climate Framework. My name is Maria Jupström, and I'm the sustainability strategist of Chalmers. Yes, you can take the next slide, thank you, because I think then we have, yes, this one. Yes, and my name is Christina von Örreich, and I'm working as the sustainability manager at KTH in Sweden, in Stockholm Technical University. And I'm very happy to have the possibility to be here today and to present how we are working with the climate framework in Sweden. Next slide. Yes, and then I will give you a short background to this work. Of course, we have these international agreements, how we should reduce the impact from the climate uh, change that is happening. So we are working, as all the other countries, uh, to reach these targets. Uh, and we thought it was very important also to make this happen in a practical way in our universities and also to increase the work that we already are doing. And of course, we have a lot of different kinds of initiative uh, on a national level, like we call it Fossil Free Sweden. And it's a, a mission from the government to work with different, different kinds of uh, organizations, both in the public and private sector, to have some agreements how you should really, in a practical way, reduce the impact from climate change. And we think that is a, a very good initiative. And Sweden is not such a big country, so of course we have working very close to the government. And then also, uh, before this initiative, we had also uh, an article in the Swedish newspapers that we want, wanted to highlight the importance of the universities to take the responsibility and move on much faster than we do today. And then we have a very good, of course, collaboration already between KTH and Chalmers. So we together initiated this uh, initiative to have a climate framework among the universities in Sweden. And we work uh, very hard with that and we anchorage very well around the universities and with other important part, uh, uh, stakeholders. We work also a lot with the students, of course, they're very important. So uh, it's uh, ended in that we now have 37 Swedish universities that has joined this climate framework. And we also pointed out how important it was for the presidents at the universities really to sign this document and feel that they have this responsibility. So um, then we have worked further on uh, to make this happen also, to break down the, the, what we have committed to our universities. And then we also, of course, have a great national and international interest in how we have worked that and how the process was to have this climate framework and how we make it happen. Next slide. I think you, you can push, push the button a couple of times, Martin, because it was an animation here. Yeah, you can move on. Then, okay. So uh, the climate uh, uh, framework uh, uh, have 
to mainly two parts. The one part is to reduce the direct climate eff 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 impact that uh, the universities have, like energy consumption and and travel and so forth. And then the other part was, uh, is to increase uh, as the positive uh, uh, impact we have from the research and all the education. Could you um, push the button, Martin? Again, please. Again, please. <laughs> and again, then it stopped. So, the climate uh, framework has 13 areas. 13 areas uh, where we give the, uh, like, uh, uh, we show how to, in this direct negative climate impact, reduce uh, climate impact from some universities. And the areas in the direct negative climate impact are business trips, commuting, food and food services, energy consumption, uh, the, the statements, waste management, and how we produce purchase and, and procurement of goods and services. Uh, and in the area of indirect positive, we have how to then increase our in, in, indirect positive climate uh, impact. And that is in investments, carbon sinks, education, research, external engagements and students. And now uh, there are four, five of these areas that are, uh, you have to, to fulfill improvements, and that, and that is in the energy and consumption, and all, all the areas in indirect positive climate effect uh, besides investments. Next slide, please. Yes, and then, of course, we have this very important next step, how we should implement this uh, climate framework, because we don't want it to just be a paper product, we really want also to work with it in, in a strong and practical way. So, of course, we have pointed out that this is a management responsibility to make that happen. But, of course, it's very important to involve all the staff so they feel that they take part in this work, the teachers, the researchers, and also the administrative personnel, of course. We all have the, the mission to make this happen. And we are also depending on each other to do this work. Uh, and we also work a lot with the property owners because we don't own our buildings in Sweden. We have landlords instead, so we need to work with them concerning, for example, the energy consumption and so on. And then it's also important that we have also a systematic way of working with, uh, 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 to really make this happen. So we make sure that we have clear objectives, put up targets, and also we pointed out in the framework the importance of have measure and how we should estimate the results and the effects. And then also, of course, how we could use the calcul calculation on how we really should reduce the, 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 the impact that we have on the climate. And then, of course, it's very important to be transparent both internal and, uh, and external concerning this work. And I would just like to add, so you understand, we have in Sweden since 2009 an um, regulation that says that all the uh, universities in Sweden and all the public authorities should have an environmental management system in place. So we have a systematic way already that we can work uh, from also to strengthen this climate framework. And we also have worked with indicators before. So this is not something that is new. We have already worked and we have sustainability goals inside our universities, according to the areas that Maria already described. But we need to uh, move on faster. And then we, that's why we took also this initiative and to improve, of course, what we're doing. Next slide, yeah. So, uh, the facts from uh, almost all universities have signed this climate framework and what we hope for the main results and effects from it, uh, they are, of course then, to do our part of reaching the 1.5 degree target. 
And that is reducing the the emissions that from the direct impact by 50% to 2030. The question is how to reach zero by 2045, because that's almost impossible. And then we hope as universities that we do our share in research education and investments to then fulfill the gap between zero and, and the real emissions that we probably have by 2045. Yes, and then also, of course, it's very important. Now we have the framework, then most of the universities were signing this last spring and also after the summer in September. So now we are working very hard to break this down and to discuss internally in the universities um, how we should continue this work. Uh, and we have uh, also a sustainability network that is a meeting for Swedish universities because we have this regulation concerning environmental management systems. So we have a network uh, uh, since a long time ago to work with sustainability issues. So we will have a discussion in these networks where we already have meetings uh, to continue this work and share experience. And then also we will have in the 12th of May uh, a, fo a following up about the climate framework where we have invited a lot of universities to discuss this and keep the issue uh, uh, alive so we will move on as we have thought. And this is uh, Maria, you, if you would like to say something, because you're the one who is the project leader for, for that meeting, you can just add something. Actually, it's open for you all, and, and, and please join us. It will be a half a day uh, of the workshop. The one part of the uh, 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 workshop is to discuss, actually, the rules and how to, to uh, uh, practical work with the uh, climate framework. And half of it, we will discuss the area of how to, to reach the, the zero, how to work with negative emissions and so forth. And we have a lot of researchers that are going to present interesting things. So welcome to join us. Look into Schalmer's um, website, follow up climate framework. Please attend. Yes, and I hope that because we will have a very also practical discussion and we want, of course, also to learn from you and your, all, all the experience you have that you can have the possibility to share and we learn from you also. And then we are also very happy because we have also presented this climate framework on a national level and both Chalmers and KTH uh, were taking part in a network. I don't know if you know about it. It's called the ICN uh, network. It's a sustainability international network for campus uh, issues. And they have different kinds of awards that they, uh, every year when we have this conference that now are canceled, of course, of Corona. It have to be in, in the end of June, otherwise. Uh, we also have been recommended to the award um, uh, that is describing how you, as a university, can work from a whole system approach. And if we have the possibility to have this award, of course, it's for all the universities that have signed the document. And I think that was a little bit special when we wanted to highlight and to to want to have these awards is that it's not only KTH or, or Chalmers, it's all the universities together that have worked with this framework and we all have the responsibility to move it on. Yes, uh, next. Yes, and then we are open for questions. We think this could be maybe an initiative to show because it could be also that you can do in your countries if you not already have done it. But we think this is a way of working with the sector and, and to share real experience in a practical level. Thank you so much, uh, Christina and Maria. That was a, a brilliant presentation. I'm sorry for, for uh, losing your animations there in, in the beginning, but I hope that everybody got uh, the message. Uh, we have uh, a few minutes for questions. Um, I will quickly turn to Nina and ask if we have anything in in the um, um... Hi, yes, uh, we do have a question on the climate framework. Do you plan to export the framework also abroad? 
or is it tailored specifically to the local context in Sweden? No, could I? Yes, go ahead. Uh, we, 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 we actually work to get it international and the, and the one step is this follow-up uh, framework that we have uh, sent out to, um, tried to send out the invitation to, for instance, SDSN. Uh, Nordic countries, yes. So, uh, uh, and it is uh, both in Swedish and English. So you could be, it could be available to use. Please contact us if you have questions. And I can just also add that we have also lifted this in the IEC and network with all different kinds of universities from different countries. So really hope that this should be exported and. I think a lot of things are similar for the universities that other countries can also use it. It's not everything that is new, but we have worked in, in a new organized way to handle this issue in Sweden. Thank, Thank you for, for those answers. answers. I, I have also a question to um, Martin actually about the climb, uh, about the tool. Um, the question is, let me see. Uh, could the indirect positive impacts uh, of shutdown trigger innovative business initiatives and policy ideas? Oh, that was a difficult question, I would say. And I, I interpret the shutdown here as shutdown from, from COVID-19. I'm not sure that is correct, but I am just assuming that for now. Uh, probably. Um, a lot of good ideas are, are born when some sort of crisis appear. Um, so, yeah, that is it. I, I guess it's highly likely that we face a lot of new problems in these times and that innovative people will actually try to solve them, which give us new innovations and development. So my spontaneous answer to that would be, sure, yes, 